my name is Dina um, so I host these Nexus talks, but it's going to be super chill. It's literally just finding out what you do. Um, so yeah. nothing official or anything. So <laughs> you co-founded Diverse Nights Events. Tell yeah. me about this. Tell me a bit about yourself. I don't know much about you, so let me know who you are. <laughs> so obviously I'm Junior. Um, as, you, as you rightly said, I co-founded Diverse Nights with uh, my colleague James. And... Um, it's funny you say that because the history of Diverse Nights actually came from Street Dreams PR. So I started Street Dreams PR alongside two of my friends. Okay. Um, when I left school, and uh, well, when I left the uni, sorry, not school. So I went to Nottingham, Nottingham University. And whilst I was there, I joined the ACS um, Society. It's like an African Caribbean society. And I was one of the um, events organizer for Nottingham. Nice. Um, so that was how the journey really, really started, to be fair. So we was organizing coaches with other unis. So we used to do one of the biggest coach parties in Leicester. And we used to speak to Brunel. We used to speak to Arthurshire. We used to speak to Kingston. We used to speak to UCL. So we organized, you know, coaches from each of those universities up into Leicester. Um have like 3,000 students. Wow. It was, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. And, and you know, I was, I was in Nottingham for three years. So, and we did that for the three years that I was there. And then we passed it on to obviously the new, you know, the new group that, that we're joining. So yeah. that was my history in terms of, you know, when I left, when I left uni, I came back, was working for a little bit and hmm, didn't really like it. And I kind of got in touch with two of my friends. Yeah. Back then, I was, what, 20, probably 22, 23 then. Got in touch with them. I said, listen, guys, um, it's my ber my birthday's coming up. Um, What do you guys feel like? We should. I want to do something for my birthday, but I don't want to go to another event. So we we'd always used to go to other people's events. So I was like, no, but I want to do something. I want to do something for my birthday. And they're yeah. like, oh, okay, well, what have you got in mind? I said, well, I kind of want to just have close friends, close family to come and, you know, maybe hire a small little space in London. Then, oh, that's going to be expensive. Like, London, you're not even trying to do it local. Because I was like, literally aiming high. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, nah, I want to do something in London. I want to, to come out, dress up. They're like, well, it's not even your 25th. Like, it's just a, just a normal birthday. I said, yeah, it's a normal birthday, but I still want to, you know, do something nice. So, yeah, we just started literally researching, literally goo goo, calling up. You know, and back then, it was mainly phone calls because they weren't really much e not emails but it wasn't like now where we had an instagram page literally <laughs> no one needs emails <laughs> exactly exactly so so yeah we, we found this i remember we found this spot in london called loom bar yeah probably, i'm not sure if you even, if you even remember it but it's loom it's behind them um, oh it's behind euston okay it's behind euston yeah so if you know euston king's cross yeah that that's what it was it was quite a cute venue. It was, we, only, we only had about 100 people. Wow. Um, the owner was was pretty chilled. You know, when we met up with him, he was like, what, what do you want to do? So I said, oh, I've got my birthday coming up. And he was pretty chilled. He said, okay, cool. This, you know, it's going to cost you, I think, how much we pay? Is it 250 pounds or something like that? And it's then I know, good. right? And I was like, <laughs> and then, but, but then here's the catch. It was like, well, the bar spend is 3K. I was like, ooh, 3K is a bit... It's quite a lot for 100 people. Yeah. Back then, obviously, it was like, nah, that's the bar spend, you know, 3K. If you've got, you got quite a lot of people coming, you should be all right. So I said, well, I've only got about 20 or 30 people that I'm inviting. It was like, yeah, 3K is easy. Don't worry, you'll make it. It's just like, okay, cool. Wow. <laughs> so obviously, I'm having, I'm having a chat with, my, with the guys. I'm like, guys, the guy said it's 3K bar spend. <laughs> what are you going to do? And I was like, it's your birthday. What are you going to do? I said, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, so I remember I was still working then. So I had like a spare 300 pounds. I said, okay, do you know what guys? I'll pay for it because it's my birthday. I don't really want to burden you guys. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So I remember met, met up with him, paid for the venue, signed the contract. Just a little to your favor to say the bar spend would be 3K. Yeah. I don't hit the bar spend. I'm going to have to cover them. <laughs> I remember just thinking about signing and thinking, hold on a minute. If I don't get this bar spend, I have to cover the rest of the money. Mm. Said, what the hell? Let's just do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So back then, everyone was thinking, Junior, you're insane. Like, how can you do something like that? But anyway, we did it. 
And then whilst I was promoting it, so so we, we got in touch with another guy that used to do all the flyer design, doesn't even do flyers anymore. And yeah. he, did, he did my flyer for us. And then whilst we whilst I was promoting it, oh guys, come to my birthday, it's my birthday. It was crazy. Other people that I didn't even know from nowhere. They're like, oh, it's my birthday that weekend. I, can I come? I want to do, can I celebrate my birthday with you? And I was like, okay, if you want to celebrate your birthday. You got a boss then to make, yeah, come. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm freaking cool. Like the more people I can get in there, the better, the, the, the better the event will be. And basically you won't believe it. We had over 100 people in the venue <laughs> with like another 30 people outside, couldn't get in because the security was like, one in, one out. They were yeah. really that strict. And then we I think we made him like four and a half K, which was crazy because like <laughs> <Press. laughs> well, we got gas. We're like, raw, this is so easy. We can do this. Like, we made a bit of money as well. Yeah. He was like, oh guys, do you want to do so? We met up with him after I had a little debrief. It's like, yeah, it was a good night. You see, you made a good. I told you. I said, oh, how come I didn't get anything from the boy? It was like, no, we didn't have that deal. It was it was a straight, it was a but the next one, if you if you if, if you hear another free K. I'll give you something for anything on for anything on top of it. It's like, oh, so, so I met up with the guys. They're like, yeah, let's do it. This is easy. This is easy. So we got all gas. Everyone was excited. They're like, yeah. So we did another one, I think, in February, because my birthday is in November. Yeah. So we did another one in February, like the Valentine's period. Yeah. And then, and then we called it Lovers and Friends, which was yeah. like our first ever event. Because it was Valentine's. We're like, oh, what can we call it? So I remember we were all just coming up with different names. And then they were like, oh, and then my two friends said, you know what? We don't mind being involved in this. We want to be involved because we can yeah. see that there's a potential there. Yeah. So we did the second one, and guess what? Smashed it. No. no! <laughs> did it not go well? It didn't go well. We had about 40 people. It wasn't great. We we actually lost money because we 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 because back then we used to do um, CDs as well. Yeah, so we used to print CDs. We used to print flyers. Yeah, we we were like, like super gassed, but reality check. After the second one, it was like okay, reality check. And then the owner yeah, was we like, "Yeah, hard work here." Yeah, so the owner was like, "Guys, what happened? You know, your first one was great." We said, "We don't know. Like, we worked even harder for this one, but we didn't." You know, it didn't, it didn't pay off. So yeah, so we were, we were confused. We we're like, what, what did we do wrong? Like, what did we like? We didn't we didn't understand how my birthday that we thought was gonna be okayish, and a brand that we've just started, so super confident what had happened, but we but we didn't have a clue because we're still relatively new. So the yeah. owner was like asking like, what? So we don't know. Like we we tried. So obviously we took a little break because we was like, okay, we lost a bit of money. It wasn't a lot, but it was still, a, it was a lot to us back then. I think we lost about six, seven hundred pounds. And then kind of took a break for about a couple of months because we was going to do it every month. That's yeah. how confident we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then whilst we took a break, we, we were started to like go to other events just to see how their events were, were doing. I remember Hostepi used to have a lot of events back then, Silks and Spice. We used to go to Gorgeous, like all these to do an event called Gorgeous. So we were just just going off to go to going to other people's events just to see what they were doing that we could incorporate within our event. Yeah. And then and then I remember we managed to secure a venue in, in the city called Pitcher and Piano. And it was like a better, it was a better location for us. So we said, you know what? Although we've got Loom Bar, it's still central, but but the city was like really, really like. That was where to be. If, you, if you're doing yeah. an event, all the main events were in the city. The city was like popping back then. Obviously, it's not as it's not as now because the only only certain people could come in the city now. But back then, any time anyone can get an event in the yeah. city. The venue, like all the venues, as you know, the city is like a square. It's like a square mile, and you've got so many venues that had late licenses back then. Yeah, not, yeah. not now. So a lot, they, a lot of them were just open to just anyone just coming in and doing an event. So yeah, I mean, we, we met up with Pitch and Piano and then um, the venue was even bigger. The venue was like 300 people. So we're like, yeah, let's let's go for it. Like the guys were like, yeah. Remember, we've already lost some money from the second exactly. one. Exactly, confidence so we're like, no, not. We, yes, confidence is not that great. But because we've taken a step back, we said, okay, cool. Let's, let's, let's give it another go. And then, yeah, that was, that was, that was the inception. And then since then, I haven't looked back since. And well, 
there's been there's been there's been a few changes because the two guys that I started it with, they left because they were like, yeah. you know what, this is too intense. We're not really this is we're not cut out for this. Yeah. Because <laughs> we have to, we have to, happens. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. As you know, in business, you have your good days, you have your bad days. Of course. So it was just yeah. So it was just up and down for them, and they were just like, nah, we can't handle this. Like, if you want to carry it on, you go for it. And then, yeah, and then they left. And then this was like, yeah, so this was within two years of starting Novels and Friends. They left, and then I started do- doing it myself. Yeah. And then I now linked up with James, now got in touch with me and said, Junior, I can, I've seen that you've, you've got so much, so some brands that I would want to incorporate with yourself, the mayor. And then since, I think since 2013, we've kind of been doing events together. But then we're also going through a, 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 a change now as well, but we'll get into that. Well, yeah, so that's yeah. that. Like, we'll that's definitely get into that. I want to ask you though, looking yeah. back now, yeah. where do you think you messed up with that second event, the the Valentine's one? Why do you think it didn't go as well with the knowledge you have now? With the knowledge I have now, I I just felt maybe we should have carried on the so with my birthday, it was birthday oriented. Yeah. So it was all about me. And then everybody got everybody that got in touch with with us or with myself, sorry, wanted to celebrate their birthday with me. Yeah, I think the difference is when we when we created Lovers and Friends, then we were one, we were competing with with big brands that were already established. So for us, we like just nobody knew Lovers and Friends. They were like, we, we don't know you guys. Yeah, so we went we went for one. We went for a date that I think it was at like the, the the second. It was a Valentine's weekend. So we went for like the second Saturday in February. And right. All the big brands were, were on that weekend. Literally. Yeah. So we were like, do you know what? If we'd done it on the maybe the first Saturday, or even the first Saturday, you had big brands on that weekend too. So I think the main thing was just we were a little bit naive in terms yeah. of we thought, okay, we've got this on the bag. But I just think we went, we weren't established enough and we should have just been a little bit more smarter in terms of okay we should have spent a little bit less and we should have just managed our expectations to say you know what maybe maybe we maybe we're only going to get 40 to 50 for this one yeah and not sell out like the first one do you get what i mean so i think yeah but but to be fair do you know what sometimes in business you do everything within your powers and it still doesn't go the way you want it to go and Freak you just kind of just and you just kind of have to just accept him be like do you know what it's business yeah just forget that start another chapter we move on do you get no, what I mean? love so, that. Yeah. it's just so interesting because it's hilarious like i'm not an, i don't really work in events at all like i'm not yeah, in that world but like i arranged a surprise party for my friend recently and it went so smooth. I'm like, I was like, oh, I should just get into event planning. I'm the best. It doesn't work like that, does it? Sometimes uh. it's like, and sometimes it's, but it's actually so complicated. I've worked on like some projects where people have been like planning things and the amount of things you have to think about now as well. And I can imagine with post pandemic life, there must be so many regulations and things. So how has life changed for you and how's business changed for you since the pandemic? Oh, it's been, as you know, it's been a crazy two years. Um, I went through so many, so many, we've been through so many changes. You know, we, we created a brand called Four Wheels Events, which was like a, a driving event on the back of the pandemic, as you know. Um, this was that towards the end of 2020. And um, we wouldn't have thought about that. Like, I've never thought about doing a, a driving event and you would have comedians on stage. You would have, you know, a talk show. We did a ZZ Mills talk show. We did, we did like a movies night. So that was like a, a concept that I would never have thought I would even get involved in. But yeah. it was just an example of trying to think outside the box, trying to be creative with the whole pandemic. At, at that point, it was, you know, we couldn't do anything. You know, I couldn't do what I love doing, which is putting on events, putting on shows. For people to have a good time yeah and it, it was it, i was depressed i was depressed for a good six to nine months during that period but i think creating four wheels events with another colleague of mine um, john kind of kind of gave me a new fresh of i don't know I, I i was really i was so pumped up that that brand actually went well and it made me think do you know what there's so much more to just your traditional 
club nights like I've always done. Do you get what yeah. I mean? Like there's so much more things that you can do outside just club nights. So for, for me, I think to answer your question directly, I think um just I think I think the pandemic has kind of opened my 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 brains in regards to trying new things such as we've created a new event called Made in the 90s now. Actually, I kind of created it before, but yeah. we've kind of created, created more in terms of doing gala events. I've always wanted to do gala, but not to this extent. So I think the pandemic's just kind of made it like, okay, do you know what? Let me start doing other things outside club nights, uh, Made in the 90s festival. So we've got so much stuff now that we, we are planning on the pipeline that I would never have thought of doing prior to the, the whole pandemic <laughs> do you get what i mean yeah, so so for me i'm glad pandemic happened because i'm now i'm now able to do things that i would not have, i would never have even thought of, of doing you know? yeah and sometimes you need that like you need to be pushed out of your comfort zone and it's so cheesy to say it but like you always do what you know like i'm yeah. guilty of this so i always stick to what i know and like try yeah. and stay in the norms not until something pushes you out do you look exactly. at something in a fresh perspective? So exactly. it actually takes a lot of strength to do that though. Like, and I actually mean that to look back and think, okay, this is what life is now. I need to find a way to make it work. And I actually saw some of your events. I think I saw some like people have been to those, like drive throughs yeah. That was such a good idea because people yeah, would think yeah. the house. People were done yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, that was, we were, we were nervous about doing that brand because we didn't know what to expect. We didn't yeah. know what the what how how the crowd was going to take to and i remember when we when we did the first show and we we literally sold out and i was like what the <laughs> <laughs> we had 300 cars in there i was like what we were so super gas i was so excited i was and even back then as well i was going through like a, a personal situation i literally just recently broke up with my ex so yeah. it was just it was a lot going on in 2020 2020 was like the worst year ever for me literally we all need to get that tattooed on you know what i mean like it was the worst yeah but at the same time it meant so much for me in terms of where i'm at now when i look back from 2020 to where i'm at now i'm kind of like do you know what there's been so much growth from that period yeah and, and like you said you know it was amazing like we had so many people that came to the show and we're like do you know what what you guys did a genius like like I wasn't doing anything, but I was looking for, because we were doing quite a lot of shows, like, because it was so popular. Yeah. Everyone was like, nah, I'm going to driving. I'm going to driving. It was like, a, it was like everyone's Fridays, like night out. Do you get what I mean? Because there was not, there was nothing else to do. That was the only thing you could do that was in line with the government's guidelines. So, so yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm proud of, 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 of me creating that with, with obviously a friend of mine, John. So yeah. that's something I would never forget four wheels event i'll never forget genuinely so happy for you because your face just lit up there when you were talking about that like literally your face just changed it's amazing honestly like this pandemic has really like affected people's confidence and creativity so like seeing you pushing forward is honestly amazing and do you know what like the idea was actually so good because someone like me and i know loads of other people it's not that we're paranoid to be around people, but my immune system is a joke, Junior, like legit. If someone sneezes in a in a house with me, I'm getting yeah. ill. Like it's so bad. Every time I went out, so like when um was it eat out to help out the first time everyone started oh, mingling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got I got COVID. I was like, okay, cool. Wow. That weakened my immune system. And then every time I go out now, I'm not even joking, I get ill. So it Seriously? puts me off. Yeah, it literally puts me off going to big parties. I went um to like um a brunch for my birthday got ill and I was like no I'm done so it's funny like that. That because I've been I've actually caught the COVID numerous times I've only caught it I didn't realize I didn't realize it was COVID so when I had it in 2020 and I was just feeling just weak and I remember I was eating but I couldn't taste what I was eating it was just weird yeah but I just thought it was a flu I just thought it was a flu and we've been like four days or five days I was I was okay yeah I was okay but that's so why to me, it was like some people have it really bad or some people yeah. have it. Quite, yeah, quite, I knew quite, quite. this is the thing. I knew if I got COVID, it was going to knock me out for a while. And it did because I've always had a weak immune system. Like, but yeah. things like events like that, or like, I don't mind going to intimate events because I just feel safer. And actually, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of posts on social media. I don't know if you have talking about whether the government should be lifting restrictions in March. So 
I don't know if you're still doing events like that, but things like that will make people feel more confident to go to events yeah. as well. To be fair, it's, it's funny with four wheels events because we we had a contract with the with the site with the site owner, and um, they they predominantly was doing just movies, mm. and our collaboration with them was okay. We would do a certain amount of shows per month just to help them out and obviously help us out, obviously. Um, but when everything opened up, literally in was it last year April, if I remember. Yeah. I think around got, that time. Yeah, around that time. Well, not everything opened up, but things were started to, to be less restricted. And I think the venues, the restaurants started to open up. Yeah. She, their, their, their sales just literally plummeted. Wow. In terms of, yeah, in terms of the movies. But, but we still had the demand for our shows because ours was a, a, a lot different. You know, we went, we was doing, you know, talk shows. We was doing comedy shows. We was doing like certain films that people like i remember us doing brown brown sugar love and basketball you know these kind of movies that set it off that people haven't seen in years so yeah. so we, we still had the demand and i think in june she literally had uh I, I remember getting the phone call i said oh guys i need to have a meeting with you and john i was like oh, what's wrong what's wrong she was like we're gonna have to close down the driving i was like what like we we've, we've planned our whole summer with Basically. the driving, <laughs> like what? She was like, "Yeah, we're gonna have to close it down, and um, we're not making much money from our, you know, our movies." And we was like, "Okay, let's take on more." She was like, "Yeah, it still wouldn't work out." We said, "Like we really tried to just make it work, but she just, I just think she was just giving up, and she just wanted to kind of go back to because I think she used to run a theater, a theater company." Yeah. And I wanted to go back to doing that. Right. And um, so for us, we're like, okay, do you know what? We're going to have to knock it in the head. So so we actually stopped doing the driving last year, June. Um, and then we even thought, okay, let's see if we can even do it ourselves. You know, create yeah. the driving ourselves. Because we were super confident that there's always a market for it. Do you get what I mean? And um, and I remember us, we actually did a show. We, had, we did like two pop-up shows in um, Coesdale Farm. And they went all right. They went, they went, they went, they went, they went like sell out shows. But I think doing doing those two shows made us realize that everybody just wants to go back to what they used to. Yeah. And we just we just made a, a decision to you know what? I think we'll just we'll just leave it for now. I think we are planning on doing pop-up events, but maybe not as as often as we would, we would like to do it. Yeah. Um, but we are planning on doing something this year in the summer for four weeks. So watch this space. <laughs> you know, I'm really glad you brought that up because you know when people hear about like entrepreneurs or people that have companies or people that are doing things, they think it's all smooth sailing. Oh. And I love that in the space of two years, you've actually had to adapt so much. What yeah. other challenges? So if someone's watching this and they're like, oh, I want to get into event management, what other things do you face and what other challenges do you actually regularly face? Well, pre-COVID, we've always had challenges. Um Venues is probably one of the biggest challenges. Um, getting the right venue, yes. um, knowing what you want to do in terms of your branding, I think it's very important. Especially now, it's very important you know what you're trying to create, what experience you're trying to give your clientele. Because if you just come into it and be like, "Oh, I want to do an event," or "I want to do a, a club night," for example, there's so many. There's so many people doing club nights now. For, for example, now is you really, really have to know one, your demographic, two, the location, what, where, where, where it's going to be, three, <laughs> um, you have to have some money, you have to have a lot of money because, <laughs> yeah, because you could easily, you could easily lose a lot of money. Yeah. Starting. So yeah. I've always said to people, just, just make sure you have a lot of money saved up because it's not plain sailing and you have to be prepared to lose money. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because you until you're in that world, you'll never know. So you might go in thinking, this is great. I've got a following. I'm going to be able to sort it. And it's not that easy, is it? It's not that easy, especially now with, like I said, with, with incorporating the whole COVID thing. Like obviously I know things are, things are a little bit more easier yeah. now in regards to, I know we was doing, you know, I think of, up until mid January, we were we were doing um, the lateral COVID test, whereby yeah. people had to bring in the test. 
to prove they were negative. So we was doing all of that, but we've actually scrapped that now. Obviously, as okay. government guidelines, we don't actually have to do that now. Loads so of places have as well. Yeah, we've, 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 yeah we've, because it was just time consuming. It was just time consuming, especially when it's cold out there, like security, just having to do extra work and you have the queue just going back. It's just time consuming. We don't need to do it as per yeah. government guidelines. So yeah, we just crap. We just crap doing that. So, so I think it's just nice just to kind of I can see the light in the, the tunnel in terms of pre-COVID. A lot more people coming out now. Yeah, and a lot more people more comfortable now. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference now between doing an event now and when I first started is the clientele, the crowd that are a lot more clued on now in regards to where they want to go. Hence why your branding is very, your branding, like you, you, you literally have to know what your, what your branding means or what it stands for. If you don't know what that means, don't even think, cause you will lose money. Like there's no ifs or buts, you will lose money. But I always say to people, losing money is part of the process. So don't be scared. Even if the first few events don't go as planned, you just have to stick at it. If, if it's really, if, if, if it's what you really want to do, you know, you have to stick at it and just carry on that journey. But you do need, you do need, you put it this way, you need a bit of luck as well. You need, you need a bit of luck on your side as well. Yeah. You know. Don't eat with everything these days. Everyone needs a little bit of luck now, right? Yeah, even, yeah. even, even, even in terms of the experiences I've had doing events. And I was talking to my, one of my business partners the other day that we deserve a bit of luck this year because we've had such a horrible, you know, last two years that we deserve, <laughs> we deserve a bit of luck. Yeah. You know? so, so yeah. Nice. And other than that, so how important is it in this space to be good at networking and how important are your links and all of that? Talk to me about that. Very, very, very important. So I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to build up relationship with venue managers, for example, revolutions that have moved on. Like the, the network is so small, but at the same time, it's so, it's so, it's so large in terms yeah. of you have, you would have a venue manager that used to manage one venue and then they've moved on, but luckily enough, they've moved on to another venue that you might potentially be interested in and they're like, oh yeah junior yeah you can you can let's let's have a talk and i'll manage this venue but i know someone that manages it so it's yeah it's, it's so important that you, you you leave a good impression to a venue manager for example um it's so important when you're dealing with security you leave a good impression mm -hmm. on a security company that might be the one managing your door and you've managed to build a relationship with them. Yeah. It's so important to, to leave a good impression on them because, you know, I, I, I work with a security team now that I've, they've been working with me for eight years. So any events I do, I would always put them forward because one, they know how I work. Yeah. Three, they know my crowd. Three, they're like, a, it's, it's like one big family. Four, if, 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 if you know, if, if things go left, they would be in the front line and, and I've been luckily enough, I've been doing events for 12 years plus now. And I can say maybe there's been one major, major incident whereby this it's been a big fight. Yeah. It's a good record to have of course. You know, in, in 12 years, as you know. So, so yeah, I think it's very important to have the right stakeholders, your security, your venues, your staff, very important. So I've got, a group of girls that they've been working with me for years. They're amazing girls. You know, they, 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 they look after all the birthday stuff. Um, yeah, without them, I, you know, it would be a lot harder. It would be a lot harder for me. So, yes, yeah, so you've got your staff, you've got your security, you've got your DJs, just as important as well. DJs are very important. Um, venue managers, venue owners, um, shubs, but get good relationship with shubs. You know, we've been working with them for years. They they started around the same time we started doing events. And then um, Louise, who was the owner of Shubes, you know, made her have regular catch ups. And as you know, with Shubes now, they've you know, she she's gone on to do amazing things. Um, so yeah, I think it's all of those all of those people are part of what we are today. Without and the customers, obviously, yeah. customers are probably the most important. Without <laughs> them, yeah, it's yeah, we won't be doing events today. Oh, no. You know, and, and I think with customers as well, it's, it's, it's good to highlight that 
I'm quite unique in regards to, I keep regular, obviously I can't keep in touch with, we've had so many people come through our doors throughout the years. In terms of birthdays, which which what we are what which what we've always been about, I always like to keep in touch with a lot of the birthday bookings. Yeah, and I think it's it's, it's one way to stay one one step ahead of the game. Like I'm giving you my secrets now. I feel one very lucky. <laughs> one way to stick to stay one step ahead of the game is it's, it's we're we're about birthdays. You know, I've always I've always looked at birthdays as the most important aspect of doing an event you know of any scale it, where, whereas it could be a large scale event a small scale event a medium scale event birthdays are so important you know and, and I've always kind of kept that for years now you know I have birthdays that I've been doing events with celebrating the birthdays with me for eight nine years yeah and, and that's not big any, we've not gone anywhere else they're like junior I know I'm gonna get with you I'm comfortable celebrating my birthday with you and I'll be back again next year. And I think that, that that's definitely one of the biggest, I would say one of the biggest pluses of, you know, diverse nights still being, still being, still being around now. That's yeah. commitment. People have been in relationships shorter than that. Nine years oh, of yeah. birthday. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And I think made in, I think creating a brand called Made in Nineties now, which is a, a slightly older demographic now, was part of the reason why I created that brand. When I when I um, reached out to Milk Tray, I'm not sure if you know a, 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 a gentleman called DJ Milk Tray. We 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 created that brand together, and I I reached out to him. I said, a lot of my crowds, you know, I'm in my thirties now. A lot of my a lot of my demographic are now getting to their thirties now, and they don't want to do the over twenty one stuff anymore. They they want to yeah. do exclusive events now. So I reached out to Milk Tray. This was even pre pre pandemic, and I said, bro. Like, I really want to create a brand called Made in Nights. I already had the name already. Yeah. It was sorting. It was just more like, okay, do I do it alone or do I do it with someone like mine like myself? So I reached out to him and he was like, Junior, I know what you're about. You know, I've worked with you guys before. Um, yeah, I would, I would love to be part of it. So we created Made in Nights. It's like an over 28, mature crowd. Um, but the plan was to do things outside our comfort zone. So last year we did a festival. Um, we did obviously we did the gala event as well, and it was amazing. It was amazing, and this was during pandemic, so you can imagine trying to navigate ourselves <laughs> during pandemic, doing a festival outside, going through so many challenges of the pe- like the weekend we did the festival was the same weekend where there was a petrol situation. I'm not sure if you remember. Oh my god, of course. Pe- that, you remember like that last Ooh. weekend in September? Yeah, it was that weekend. So you, yeah. can, so you can imagine we had like we had sold like over a thousand tickets and then people can't get to the place. Oh my god. Yeah. It's like one thing after another. But I love the resilience. I love that you're always oh, yeah, speaking as well. Like it's yeah, needed. People's people's tastes change so quickly now as well. Like people are constantly battling for the next thing. So it's definitely. so great that you're resilient to that and always trying to find out the next thing. I love that. Definitely, definitely. So so yeah, I, I would say like one of my biggest achievements today is just like you said, just being being adaptable, being flexible, and just being creative. You have to be like with with, with our industry, you have to be creative. There's, there's there's so many there's so many different arts of entertainment, as you know. There's so many as, assets to entertainment. There's a space for anyone to get into. But I've always said, if you're going to get into entertainment, just be prepared to go through that journey. Don't think you can come in. Yeah, you might be lucky. You might make, you know, you might make a lot of money to start with, but you can easily lose a lot of money too. And I've lost a lot of money. I've I've made a lot of money, and it's it's just that process. And you have to be prepared to go through that journey. You can't come in and be like, yeah, I'm gonna make a quick month, quick buck, and it's just it just won't work. Yeah, you get found out quickly. And our in our circle is so like so small in terms of the organizers that do stuff. Like I know Slay. Yeah. I know all the main players. I know DJ Nay. I know all the main players within our industry because we are very small. You know, we are very yeah. small. You know, so that happens. To, yeah. yeah, it's so true. And I think that's one thing. Like newbies always don't realize that the more you get into an industry, whatever your industry is, whether it's entertainment, events, media, you will yeah. realize it's huge. But everyone knows everyone. You are only like one person away from a certain link, so you've got to yeah. have that reputation, especially with events. 
I would never go to an event if I didn't trust the organizers or if I didn't, if I didn't know they were established. So I'm glad exactly. you were raw and honest about that because sometimes people do feel like, oh, I can just get in, make a quick buck and get out. I've seen it, random pop-up events, and then I never see them again. So um, exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm glad you were raw and honest about that because it needs to be heard. No, it definitely needs to be heard, but I, I would never discourage anyone from getting into events, really? entertainment. It's, it's a good industry to get into. I know we've had a horrible talk two years, as you know, um, but obviously things are looking good now. You know, touch wood, we have a clean year. It's, it looks yes. like the government are really keen on just getting back to normality. You know, I'm, like you said, I'm hearing from March, you know, that all the restrictions will be, will be gone, true. right? Yeah, so, true. So yeah, you know, I, I know some people are still nervous, um, but I always say to them is there was life before COVID and we have to try and just move on. And yes, if, you, if you're not comfortable still coming to certain events, I can't force you to come out. Um, but at the same time, we only have one life. Try and enjoy it as much as you can. Um, yeah. yeah, because we want, we want people to come out. We want people to come out, have a good time. We want to put on great shows for you guys. You know, because that's what we love. That's what I love doing. You know, I love putting on great shows and seeing people have a good time makes me feel like, okay, do you know what? I've achieved something, you know, and making money, obviously, you know, being able to pay my bills, being able to pay my mortgage is, is obviously <laughs> important. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You know. And, you know, where can people find you and find your events? So, so yeah. So, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in a few brands. So, if you go on Instagram... I'm actually in the process of actually creating a brand for myself now called Junior Halo, um, which is predominantly me. Because what I found out is over the years, people just love coming to my event, which is obviously I've done so many events now that I've, I've managed to build a reputation, as you know. I managed to build a, a brand for myself. Yeah. And generally people just want to just come to my event only because they feel safe. They know that, you know, they know they're going to have a good time. So yeah, if you go on Instagram, go on Facebook, just to search Junior Halo, I will pop up. And then from then you would see so many other avenues that I'm doing, made in 90s, four wheels events, you know, we're doing international stuff, Destination Dubai, you know, that I'm partly involved in. So yeah, there's so many other stuff that, that you can see from there, you know. Sounds exciting. And honestly, I wish you the best of luck. I mean, I'm not saying you need it, but as I said, just a little bit of luck to help us with everything. And I no, hope we do. it goes your way. Trust me, <laughs> it's needed. We've had a, we've, we, we need a good year this year. We need a good year. You know, we want to put on amazing shows for you guys. So yeah, you know, let's, 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 let's hope we have a good year for everyone, you know. Junior, thank you so much for sharing your experience. I honestly really appreciate it. It was no, so exciting to learn so. about what you do. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time.